Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, you're going to be learning two bluegrass tunes on ukulele. So as you guys heard, the first one, Cornbread and Butter Beans, is very beginner friendly, but the second tune, Shortening Bread, is geared more so for the intermediate to advanced player. Now both songs utilize the claw hammer style of playing. So this is a technique that is synonymous with bluegrass music and banjo playing, but it's quite an interesting technique because it doesn't really relate to any of the other strumming techniques you may have learned in the past. Therefore, if you are new to playing claw hammer style, I'd highly encourage you to check out our brand new course. So you can click this link or you can go to the site and do a search for Technique Toolbox. That's our technique series that the claw hammer course is part of. Now, this claw hammer course is going to teach you the mechanics behind executing the technique in three easy to follow steps. So let's actually take a look at how that course is laid out. You'll begin by learning the three steps. Next, you'll learn two additional exercises that help to deeply embed the technique into your playing repertoire. Now, each exercise is tabbed out and accompanied by an interactive tab player. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset for learning a new technique like this that much easier. And finally, you'll put it all together to perform an etude and two awesome sounding bluegrass tunes. And the best part, each bluegrass tune comes in two versions, one for beginners and one for the intermediate to advanced player. So that brings us back to this lesson. In this video, you're going to be learning the first tune, that beginner friendly tune, Cornbread and Butter Beans. But if you want to learn the second tune, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for two bluegrass tunes. Now on that page, you'll be able to print off the tabs and keep that for your records as a PDF file, as well as access that really cool interactive tab player that I highlighted just a minute ago. And I do want to again stress that these songs are taught with the assumption that you've gone through the course and you have the claw hammer technique under your belt. So I can't stress enough, do go through the course first before trying to tackle these songs because it will set you up for success. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Christopher to teach you how to play cornbread and butter beans and then I'll see you at the end of this lesson. Friends, so we've come to the first full tune that we're going to learn in this claw hammer style and I've selected one of my favorite old time tunes which is cornbread and butter beans. If you're not familiar with this song, I highly recommend looking up the Carolina Chocolate Drops version which really brought this song back into prominence a little bit probably about 10 years or so ago. Uh, but it's a very simple chordal song, really only has three chords to it, kind of even two and a half. You can, you can really just play this with a G and D seventh chord if you wanted to, but I like to throw uh, a passing C in there to get to the D seventh, which a lot of versions also have. So we're starting out the first A section of this tune. We're going to play without our brush stroke. We're just going to play our melody notes, and this will get our ear a little bit more familiar with the melody, and also give it a sort of progression as we go along instead of playing the same exact pattern all the way through. So you'll see what we're doing is we're playing two of each melody note and then the thumb through and through, just like we did in the beginning rhythmic lessons in this course. So this shouldn't be too hard for you. We're gonna be starting on a G major chord. And we're going to come down and we're gonna have our first melody note on the A string. So we're gonna go twice on that and then thumb. And then we're gonna go down and play the G on the third fret of our E string right here. And we're gonna do that twice. And then we're gonna repeat that bar. It's an exact repetition. So the first two bars will sound like this. Let's try that much together. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now moving on, we're staying right on this G chord and we're gonna play the same thing. We're gonna start out on the A string again on the second fret. And then we're going to do the same thing with our right hand, but just lift up our middle finger from the A string so that we now have an open A string. 
So this next bar, bar three, will sound like this. Let's try bar three together. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now we're moving on to some semblance of a C chord or a C6, depending on how you really want to look at that in this context. But for now, we can just play open strings. You can lift up your hand from that G major chord and have this. And we're going to play the melody notes on our E string is our open E string. And then we're going to just put down our third finger on the third fret of our E string on that G that we've already played in the G major chord. So this four, bar four will sound like this. So here are bars three and four together. Let's try that much. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now let's try that entire first line together, starting at the beginning. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now we're moving on to a D seventh chord. And much as we addressed with our F major chord when we're playing claw hammer style, we're not going to fret anything on the G string. So our D major chord will still have an open G. So all we need to do is put one finger. I generally like to use my second finger. You could also use your first. It doesn't matter too much on the second fret of your E string on the F sharp right there. And you'll note that our right hand work in this bar five is identical to what's above it as it is um, in, in the next bar, in bar um, six. It is identical to what we were doing. We would play two melody notes on the A string, then two melody notes on the E string, back and forth, except we're doing it over a D seventh chord this time. So it's gonna sound a little bit something like this. Let's try that together, nice and easy. One, two, three, four. Very good. And then moving on, we're staying on this D major chord for a moment. Keep that second finger down, even though we're not actually using it on this bar, we can still keep this down since we're in D major. So we're gonna repeat what we had, just the open A strings. But on beat three, we're gonna take our ring finger or second finger, whichever is more convenient for you. And we're gonna place it on the second fret of our A string on the B right there. And just play the same exact thing on the A string. So this is bar seven right here. Let's try bar seven together. One, two, three, four. Very good. And then we can just lift up our fingers and we're gonna play all open strings. So we'll hit our A string melody note twice. And then we can just put down our G major chord on beat three back to this. And we're gonna play the G on the E string on the third fret. So bar eight will sound like this. Just like that. So let's try from bar seven um, up until bar eight. One, two, three, four. Good, let's start back at bar five and put this together from the D seventh chord. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now moving on to bar nine, we're going to do exactly what we just did. This is the reason that I wanted you to put down the full chords for all of these, although we don't really need them when we're playing the individual notes in this first section, is all we're going to do now is play exactly the same melody, but with a brush stroke on beats two and beats four. So the only change is really in your right hand if you've already been putting down the full chord voicings. If you've been not, now you will have to put down the full chord voicings to get the full sound. But everything else is identical. So what I'm gonna do is just play um, bars nine through 12 for you so you can hear this. And all we're doing is adding in the brush stroke. Right? So the only thing that we really need to address in this bar is in bar 12, we have one funky little change. When we get to the C major chord, we're gonna have our regular old C down, but then we're going to just hop our ring finger over 
to get the G on the third fret of our E string, and we're gonna leave the A open. Just to give this, we like these really open sounds in claw hammer playing, this bit of ambiguity to the harmony really helps solidify the style. So we get to play notes like this. We have a G, an A, another G, and a C. So it's kind of a C6 chord that we're playing here with this open voicing. It's just gonna give a slightly different feel when we have the brush stroke. Let me play for you bars 11 and 12, and then we'll try those two together. So let's try bars 11 and 12. One, two, three, four. Very good, now let's try that entire line. So starting on bar nine. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now moving on, same as we did above, this D seventh chord, because we're only using one finger on that F sharp, not voicing anything else. Everything is identical to what we did above. We're just adding in that brush stroke on beats two and four. So back and forth between the A string and the E string for two bars. Let's try that together just to get the brush stroke in there. One, two, three, four. And then continuing on to bar 15, we're gonna do the same thing on beat one, the A string, brush, thumb, and then remember we're gonna put that note down, the B on the second fret of our A string. And we'll keep that down. So the voicing we're going to end up here is a sort of D 13th voicing that we're using. We'll have G, C, F sharp, and B. It's a funky sounding chord, but listen to it in context and I'll resolve to the last bar as well and you'll see why this works. All right, and then we're just moving on to our C major chord, but C6, so all open, and then resolving to G major. Let me play this last line for you and then we'll do it all together. Now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now once you're comfortable with this version of cornbread and butter beans, you can click through and we have a slightly more stylized version in the next lesson. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed learning this tune. These bluegrass songs have really fun melodies, and when you couple in the upbeat tempo, it just makes it a lot of fun because it makes it feel like a dance. Now, I do want to remind you that if you want to get the tabs to print off Keep For Your Records and you want to check out the second bluegrass tune, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for two bluegrass tunes. Uh, don't forget as well that a really cool interactive tab player is there that you can use to slow down the song, loop sections, highlight bars, all that fun jazz. And again, if you are new to climb or you want to brush up on the technique, do check out the course. I'll put a link in the description box below for that as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the part two lesson. Take care.